join me as I upcycle some frumpy finds into French country fabulous. Hi there, welcome to the Schwelben's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. For my first project today, I'm going to take this apple. It's really big. I got it for $3 at the thrift store, and it's kind of a squishy material. It's not ceramic or anything, but I'm going to take some of this sheepskin chalk paint by Folk Art and give it a couple of good coats. This brown color just isn't my style, so I want to make it into something more French country. I printed off these really pretty apple blossom images. I got these from Creative Fabrica and I'll have the link to these down in my description box if you're interested. And I'm going to just cut them out and then use Mod Podge to apply them randomly to the apple. I'm actually going to start with the stems right by this top stem. You can see that I've gotten one almost done there already and I'm just going to keep adding them all the way around and then I'll bring a few up from the bottom too. When I'm doing this decoupage I like to put a little bit down of the Mod Podge and then add my little graphic. Then I just lift up the rest of it that needs to be glued down, add a little bit more Mod Podge and then very gently fold it down. And I like to use my brush and go right down the center of the design because then I can work myself out onto the sides. You can add as many or as little of these graphics onto the apple. You do what works for you. I wanted it to be fairly full, so I'm going to continue adding lots until I get the look that I want. I love how this turned out and I hope you like it too. If you like what you see so far, I would love it if you could hit that red subscribe button. It really helps my channel grow and I truly appreciate it. I'm using one of the IOD trimmings mold and this one that I'm using is all roses. And I'm going to just use the IOD clay because that's what I happen to have on hand. I don't think I would buy this clay again. It's a little pricey for how, the amount that you get. And I do find that the DOS clay from Michaels or online on Amazon works just as well. I like to use this little handheld roller once I've got my clay in and I'm just going to be rolling it around to make sure that the back of the clay which is the top what you see here is nice and flat then I won't have any bumps and everything will lay smoothly for me then I'm going to take my finger and just pull off all of that clay from the micro rim I really love using these IOD clay molds because of that micro rim it makes it so nice and clean but they are a little pricey too so I just make sure I find some on sale and when I do then I grab a whole bunch for these long molds, I like to flip the mold upside down and then very carefully just start peeling it back and look at how beautiful it is. These molds are gorgeous. They have so much detail and I think this is so pretty. What I'm going to do is glue it onto this half wall basket. When I'm working with clay, I like to use the Gorilla Glue Clear Grip Glue, and that's what I have here. It comes in a silver tube. I squeeze out some of it, and then I use my finger to spread it out towards the edges because I want to make sure that the center gets some, but also all of those edges because this basket has a rounded shape to it, so I'm going to need to mold the clay into the shape of the basket. Now the trimming mold is a little bit rounded as you can see here, but my basket is straight across. So what I'm going to do is just very gently push up the clay and make it go straight across rather than the rounded shape that it had. And this didn't distort anything. It actually turned out really well. The next thing I do is just take my hand and very gently push it down onto the basket, making sure that the glue can connect as often as possible without actually squishing the shape of the mold. So you do have to be a little bit careful, but these are quite forgiving. So just very gently make sure that you press it all down at the top, at the bottom, and then let it dry for a long time. I usually let mine go overnight. 
I gave the basket quite a few coats of a white satin spray paint and now I'm just going to take my chip brush in black and very gently just go over the roses to bring out all of those details. And that's it for this basket. It's ready to decorate. I blended three different colors of paint together to match this canister lid. I think I used a light blue, a little bit of a navy blue, and then some purple, just to give it sort of that periwinkle blue color. I just love this color of blue, and I think it's perfect for French country. I'm going to add some of this talc powder. I buy this in this big jug from Amazon, and I've had it for quite some time. And it gives me the ability to take any acrylic paint. The paints that I used were from the Dollar Tree. And what I'm going to do is add just a tiny little smidge of this talc powder and it's immediately going to transform the acrylic paint into a chalk paint. I love doing this. I don't want to buy huge tubs of chalk paint in every single color. So I'd rather invest in the talc powder and then I can create my own colors whenever I need them. I have also used this talc powder on paints for furniture so it's really good for that too and if you're interested in it i have a link down in my description box these projects today are fairly simple with all of these thrifted items and this wood candlestick i got for two of them i think they were four dollars for the pair i'm painting this one the blue color because i want this to elevate this canister into something really beautiful and unique and i think adding a candlestick or a spindle to something just makes it look so much more high end I added a bunch of Gorilla Glue to the bottom of the canister and now I'm going to glue the candlestick right on top. I think this project turned out absolutely fabulous. I found two of these finger holder taper candlesticks at the thrift store and I'm going to for this one add this bowl on top of it. I just wanted to elevate it and make it look a little bit nicer. So I'm using my Gorilla Glue again and I'll set this aside to dry until it cures. Once it had dried, I took it outside and I gave it a couple of coats of spray paint and it's a chalk paint by Rust-Oleum and it's called Putty. And I think this color is absolutely beautiful. I'm definitely going to be picking up more of this color. I'm just gonna take my sanding block and go around all of the edges and make it a little distressed, bringing some of that original color through. For the second one, I'm going to give it a couple of coats of white chalk paint. However, normally when things are this shiny, I give it a coat of clear matte spray paint first just to dull it down so the paint has a little bit more to grip to. And I forgot to do that on this step. So either give it a quick coat of a primer spray paint and then do chalk paint on top or the clear matte finish. I had to give this, I think, three or almost four coats of chalk paint just because it was so slick and it really took a long time for it to dry. I distressed the white one the same way I did for the putty one, but now I'm going to add some hot glue and I'm going to put this single stem of lavender from the Dollar Tree right into it. I thought this would be so pretty just to have something simple in this candlestick. I'm going to fill the rest of the bottom with some Spanish moss and this project is done too. I hope you enjoyed watching me create some frumpy finds into fabulous French country. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. That gets me noticed more on YouTube and helps my channel grow. If you haven't subscribed already, hit that red subscribe button and the notification bell. See you in the next one.